All right, guys, hello. Welcome to the world of Python, a powerful language that is at the heart of many artificial intelligence applications. So today, we're going to cover foundational concepts that you'll need to kickstart your AI journey with Python. This is video five out of 20 in our beginner series and introduction to AI. So first, if you remember, I wanted us to pull up Jupyter Notebook. And so in our last video, we walked through Jupyter. This time, what I'm gonna do is actually just type the Jupyter Notebook. And you'll see that in your browser, as you are seeing on the right side, this is popping up. Now, what I want you to do here is just click on new and then click on Python 3 to identify that as your desired kernel. And from here, we'll actually start typing. Now, I'm just gonna call this video five because this is the fifth in our series. Um, you can name it whatever you want. And what I'd like to do is actually walk through some of these principles um, by actually showing you code blocks. So the first that we're going to visit is called variables and data types. Now in Python, you can think of a variable like a container that stores data. So you can think of it as a labeled box where you can actually put things inside. So it's gonna be super straightforward. I'm gonna say name equals and then open quote, Sean end quote. I'm going to type age equals 900 because I'm obviously an elf or robot or a cyborg. And am I a student? Well, I'm a student of life, so I'm going to say is student is equal to true. Now, when I click command enter at the same time, this stores these variables. So when I open the cell, you can then see that um, if I typed a name and ran it, it would say Sean. And if I wrote type outside of name, it would tell me that it's an STR. And what is that? Well, that tells us that the name variable is actually storing a string data type. And you might be wondering, what is a string? High level, a string is essentially a series of different shares or chars or characters. And so when you have many characters strung together, LOL, it is a string. And strings are typically how we represent a lot of textual data, like my name, for example. Now, if you remember what I was saying about age, I said that my age was 900, but how does the machine think of that data point? So I'm gonna go you run the function type, which is again a, a function that's native to Python 3. I'm gonna say, what is the type of the variable age? This time it's saying that it saved it as an integer data type. Um, integers are one way of basically storing numbers. Um, basically they are full representations of a number that are not included in something known as a float. So there's most numbers are either represented as either a float or an int. If I changed age to 900.0, which is weird because ages normally aren't represented like that, then it would change the type of the age to a float value. So for simplicity's sake, we're just gonna keep them as integers for now. Um, and we'll finally just interrogate the final value here, which is is student. And you'll see here, that that stands for Boolean. So this is telling me that the type of a response like capital T, lowercase r, u, e, true, is a Boolean representation, which basically is a truth value. And there's only two values here. It can either be true or false. Um, and both of those are stored as a variable type known as Boolean. So now that we have that under our belt, I'm gonna jump next to basic operations. And when I say basic operations, we're gonna basically go through some basics of arithmetic. So let's say that our result is 10 plus 10. The main point that I want you to know here is that Python can actually do basic math. Here 10 plus 10 equals 20, so it can definitely um, add 10 minus 10 is zero. It can also subtract 10 star 10 is 100, so it can also multiply and finally, 10 divided by 10 will return 1.0. Um, and that is basically the core of these different types of arithmetic functions. Uh, you can add, subtract, multiply, and even divide using Python. Next, we're gonna jump into something known as control structures. And here I'm gonna just teach you the high level concept of if else. Now control structures allow you to make decisions in your code. And the if else statement is honestly a really fundamental decision making tool. So I'm gonna say temp underscore F for temperature in Fahrenheit, and I'm gonna call it 80. We're gonna make a little temperature um, thermostat here. I'm basically gonna say, if the temperature in Fahrenheit is greater than 80, I wanna print, it is so hot. Whoops, typo, there we go, it is so hot. Now, L if, 
the temperature is less or if the temp f is less than let's say 50 degrees then you would print it's cold outside again let's assume of course that i'm going off rough east coast standards i know some people in the midwest in the u.s would think that around 50 and less than 50 is still pretty brisk i mean for any other condition else let's print the weather is perfect. So you'll see here that when um, I set temp F to 80, uh, since we actually didn't exceed 80, um, the weather is still perfect. But if I go up to say 81, even one value higher, now, I've hit my threshold and this control statement thinks it is so hot. And so in the context of AI, decision making is super crucial. And for instance, here, the AI thermostat uses this type of logic to decide whether or not it is identifying the environment as hot or cold. Now that you've got this concept, let's jump to the next chunk, which is about loops. Now, loops allow you to repeat a block of code multiple times. This is especially useful in AI when you're trying to process large data sets. So first let's go through a for loop. So I'm gonna say, I'll make a for loop and I'll call it fruit, a bunch of fruits. And let's just store in our fruit um, list. We'll do kiwi, just came back from Hawaii. Let's do papaya um, and let's definitely do mango. So for fruit in fruits, print fruit and when I run this code it will just basically print them all out um, and that's an example of going through a for loop and it terminated once we hit the end of the list now let's visit a while loop which is a little bit similar but the difference with while loops is that it will repeat the action until um, a condition the user defines is met so in a while loop let's set let's set a counter and I'll start my counter at zero. I'm gonna basically set the condition. So while my counter is less than, I don't know, I like the number seven because it's a prime number. While the counter is less than seven, I want to print um, the counter value. And in order to change the conditions, otherwise it would stay in the, at that value forever, let's increment by one until we hit seven. And so I'm now going to run this. And that failed because I called it count, not counter. Debugging, guys. And let's run that. So you'll see um, that we begin at zero, and then we basically continue printing those values and incrementing. And once we hit a value that was indeed equal to seven, uh, the entire while, the entire while um, loop stopped. And so in general, in AI, Loops could be used to iterate through data points and adjust model parameters, or even train a model over multiple epochs. We'll get to that later, but for now, these are sort of the core fundamental principles within the Python language that you should know. So, congratulations. You have taken your first steps into Python programming in the context of AI. And now with these foundational concepts, you are well on your way to diving deeper into the more advanced topics like functions, libraries, and eventually, building your own AI models. All right, this is video five out of 20 in our beginner series and introduction to AI. By the end of this series, you will be ready to learn more advanced concepts of AI and machine learning, which will allow you to elevate your career in tech and remain in demand on the job market. Now, I also want you all to remember that indeed, the key to mastering Python is practice, just like learning any other language. If you don't use it, you lose it. So, experiment with the code snippets, modify them, and see the results. Happy coding!